Hello friends, welcome back to a 40k journey. My name is Nate and today we are going to take a look at dry brushing. Dry brushing is a fantastic uh, technique that will give you really cool looking results really quickly and it doesn't take a lot of effort to start. It does take a little bit of practice to get things right, but uh, you can be done with stuff you probably have lying around. Uh, you don't actually need dedicated dry brushes to dry brush. I do happen to have one. This is the Armory Painter Hobby Dry Brush and <clears throat> this uh, mat, cutting mat also came in the Jazza's Mega Minis box, which a friend of mine was kind enough to get me for the holidays. So thank you, you know who you are. But it's a really cool box. Uh, I encourage you to check it out, whether you're new to hobby painting or you know, you've been at it for a while, I'm betting it's got something you'll find useful. But anyway, I'm not being paid for that. Um, dry brushing involves using a brush loaded with some paint, but most of it will be uh, worked into the bristles or brushed off onto a paper towel. Uh, what that'll do is drag it lightly across the surface and what will happen is it will leave paint on the raised areas but it will leave the recessed areas dark or whatever your original color is so they'll be darker and provide some shadows. Uh, I made this base with some Astro Granite Debris here to break up the outline a little bit and with the Templar Abbey um, roller from Green Stuff World. So it's pretty cool. And then I painted it with a base of Rhinox Hide. And what we're gonna do is work through some successively lighter colors to give it some, you know, new color without um, drowning out the dark recesses. Okay, I'm gonna start with some Steel Legion Drab. And I think I'm gonna try the new Hobby Dry Brush here. I haven't used this yet, but one of the cool things about dry brushing is that you can do it with really cheap brushes. Like these are just makeup brushes. I got them at the grocery store. Uh, these two were like two bucks a piece. And I think this is by far the most expensive one I ever got. And it was like $5. So I'm not gonna use this one. Uh, it's a little too big, it'll be a little clumsy and it won't give me the control I'm looking for. Uh, a word of warning, I've noticed specifically with red, dry brushing with red paints tends to color your bristles red and I have had that color, despite a lot of washing, I have had that color mix in with like light grays and whites I've been using. So word of warning when dry brushing with red, that may happen. So. What I have here is just a, uh, a sponge. You've see, probably seen people using uh, moisture pads. Uh, same thing. It cost me like a, I got like two for a buck eighty-seven at the grocery store. And the trick is that you want just a little teeny tiny bit of moisture off this. So I just wetted the corner here. You don't want too much, otherwise that's going to foul your dry brushing. So just going to do a little bit there. Make sure there's not too much. And what we're going to do take our Steel Legion Drab. You just want a tiny bit of paint, just a tiny bit of paint. And then we're gonna work that in, work that into the bristles with our paper towel here. And then to check, I have my dry brushing palette here. So this is gonna be our tester. So we're gonna look for a texture that's kind of similar to that. And really, I think these tank treads here should do. And just see how that looks. That looks good. Nice, subtle effect. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit more paint here, not a lot. And then I'm gonna hold the brush about halfway. We don't want, you know, too much pressure on it. And just lightly go back and forth over the top. And actually I need a little bit more paint. That's not a whole lot there. You wanna work the paint into the sides of the brush too, otherwise you're just gonna get the tip there. There we go. That's starting to show. So and how much you do this is entirely up to you. I would recommend not trying to do this uh, on big flat surfaces like Space Marine armor. Uh, dry brushing tends to leave kind of a, uh, a like dusty look and I, if that's what you're looking for then go for it but on big flat surfaces again like space marine armor 
for my money, you can almost always tell when something has been dry brushed and it doesn't always look that good. But for anything with a lot of texture, like fur or you know hair, or in this case, uh, the rubble here of a uh, destroyed abbey or just time-worn abbey, it looks fantastic. So, and this is one of the first techniques I learned when I was first starting out, and I have used it extensively, and I think this is a tool that every painter should have in their toolbox. It doesn't need to be something you use, you know, extensively, or even for all of your models. Like, there'll be some models where you just don't want to dry brush, you know, it's just not going to look good. Or, you know, a, a technique like wet blending or glazing will give you better results. But for my money, if you're in a hurry, like you just really want to get your models out on the table or, you know, you're an impatient model or whatever, dry brushing can give you really good results very quickly. Go to Bane Blade Brown and we're going to repeat the process to bring the brightness up just a notch. And yeah, you know, if you want to just take the uh, darker or mid-tone and just add a little white or light gray to it, you could do that too. It's just I happen to have these colors here and they look good. So go back to our tester here. And this can also help you avoid making mistakes. Like if you've got too much moisture or too much paint on your brush, your dry brush palette will help you figure that out before you actually put it on the model and wind up making a huge mistake that's going to cause you a lot of headache. Beautiful, beautiful. And as you get progressively, you know, lighter in color, you want to apply a little less pressure and do a little bit less. That way you don't bury your earlier colors with the lighter colors. You know, you want to show that gradation. You don't want to just skip straight from the super dark recesses all the way up to the brightest points. You're gonna miss out on that nice gradient. Okay, looking good. Right. Just light pass over the top. Just a little bit more. Don't need a lot. Trying to bring out the edges a little bit more. All right, and I think I'm gonna call that good. That's really all there is to it. Dry brushing is simple. It can give you absolutely spectacular results and it can do it way faster than like glazing or wet blending. Unless, you know, you're really adept at those and have a lot of practice with them. But that is it. I encourage you to dry brush some of your own work. See what you think of it. And uh, see my previous video about making the dry brush palette. These are super useful, super easy to make. Thank you for joining me for this 40k journey. Please like, subscribe, and support the channel on Patreon.